Space exploration is not just about rockets, satellites and space flights. It is certainly more than that. We live in an incredible world. Just this year scientists made significant strides toward an artificial womb, edited the first human embryo in the United States and even got closer to growing human organs inside pigs. Despite these remarkable achievements that are poised to define our future, there is a negative reality that we must also keep at the top of our minds. Some 2.0 billion people lack safe, readily available water at home. More than 1.7 million children die each other due to polluted environments. And across the globe, 795 million people do not have enough food to lead a healthy life. These are grim statistics. Even more intimidating is the investment needed to take on these issues. The World Food Program calculates that, for example, $3.2 billion are needed per year to reach all 66 million hungry school age children. NASA's science budget alone is $5 billion. You might think that this seems like a no-brainer. Instead of turning towards the cosmos, shouldn't we address these more immediate concerns? It might seem misguided for so much federal funding to go to institutions like NASA. But in fact, it is quite the opposite. NASA is the world's main source of information on how our planet works. And I won't be wrong to say that space exploration and research is irrevocably connected to betterment of humanity. The work that goes on board at the International Space Station is just one such example. Often explained Lightfoot, NASA's representatives speak about the space station being of the Earth and for the Earth. Let me highlight this relationship by giving a small example. NASA uses the water purification stations on the International Space Station. And now NASA has decided to build a modified version of those water purification stations and send them to third world countries where healthy water is not available. They are not the exact systems but they are based on the same chemical filtering method that NASA uses on the International Space Station. NASA keeps doing a lot of stuff like that. I am not exaggerating when I say a lot. Michelle Thaler, the assistant director for science communication at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, gave another example in an interview with Futurism. We have satellites that can measure the mass of aquifers under the ground. We see them depleting in places like Northwest India where people are actually not having well water because of this. We can tell people where there will be problems with drought or drinking water. Between 2000 and 2010, groundwater depletion caused by irrigation increased 22%. NASA scientists and colleagues used Earth observations and models to understand where this groundwater depletion is most severe. The most overexploited aquifers, the North and South Arabian, Persian, Western Mexico, and Upper Ganges, all show evidence of groundwater depletion from irrigation. In drier countries like Kuwait, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, crops require extremely large amounts of groundwater depleting irrigation to grow. For example, rice grown in Pakistan causes eight times more groundwater depletion per unit than in India, where surface water resources are more plentiful. International trade moves these crops between countries, so in some cases, the countries consuming the most groundwater depletion linked crops may have more water supplies, relatively speaking. However, importers of groundwater depleting crops face a potential future food supply risk as overexploited aquifers may not be able to continue providing water at current levels in the long term. As it turns out, when it comes to figuring out whether we will have water to drink at all, we need science, we need a space program. And now let's talk about the investment. NASA doesn't just look at the groundwater though. The institution focuses on food security, climate science and much more. They run about 110 active science missions at NASA at a time on that $5 billion budget. This may seem like a lot, but there is no organization in the world that could do it that efficiently. Yes, it is an investment. It is a $5 billion a year investment that the earth makes, that the world makes. That investment pays off. In fact, it saves lives. For example, back in 1980s, it was a NASA satellite that detected the beginning of the ozone hole. It was just doing pure science. It wasn't looking for the ozone hole. NASA noticed the hole and realized we were destroying the Earth's ozone layer. Then we ran to the United Nations and as a result, they signed the Montreal Protocol, the treaty that banned those chemicals which are hurting the ozone layer. 
if nasa hadn't detected the ozone hole humans would have largely destroyed the ozone layer by the year 2060 good news scientists say the antarctic ozone hole is on the road to recovery the amounts of ozone depleting substances grew rapidly in our atmosphere in the 80s and early 90s but had stopped growing in the late 90s because of the 1987 montreal protocol as levels of these manufactured chemicals have decreased in the last 14 years The ozone hole has seen a slight improvement. Apart from monitoring water quality from space and detecting calamities like ozone layer depletion, here are six ways the space station is benefiting life on Earth. Growing high quality protein crystals. There are more than 1 lakh proteins in the human body and as many as 10 billion in nature. Every structure is different and each protein holds important information related to our health and to the global environment. Space is perfect environment to study these structures. Microgravity allows for optimal growth of the unique and complicated crystal structures of proteins leading to the development of medical treatments. As an example of a protein that was successfully crystallized in space is hematopoietic prostaglandin D synthase (HPGDS) which may hold the key to developing useful drugs for treating muscular dystrophy. This particular experiment is an example of how understanding a protein structure can lead to better drug designs and further research is ongoing improving eye surgery and space hardware laser surgery to correct eyesight is a common practice and technology developed for use in space is now commonly used on earth to track patient's eye and precisely direct the laser scalpel the eye tracking device experiment gave researchers insight into how humans frames of reference and overall control of eye movement are affected by weightlessness in parallel with its use of the space station the engineers realized the device had the potential for application on earth tracking the eye's position without interfering with the surgeon's work is essential in laser surgery the space technology proved ideal and the eye tracking device equipment is now being used in a large proportion of corrective laser surgeries throughout the world preventing bone loss through diet and exercise during the early days of space station astronauts were losing about 1 and 1/2% of their total bone mass density per month researchers discovered an opportunity to identify the mechanism that control bones at a cellular level these scientists discovered that high density resistive exercise dietary supplementation for vitamin d and specific calorie intake can remedy the loss of bone mass in space That research is also applicable to vulnerable populations on earth developing improved vaccines ground research indicated that certain bacteria in particular salmonella bacteria might become more pathogenic means able to cause disease during space flight salmonella infections result in thousands of hospitalizations and hundreds of deaths annually in the united states while studying them in space scientists found a pathway for bacterial pathogens to become virulent Researchers identified the genetic pathway activating in Salmonella bacteria allowing them to increase likelihood to spread in microgravity. This research on the space station led to new studies of microbial vaccine development, breast cancer detection and treatment technology. A surgical instrument inspired by Canadian space research heavy lifting and maneuvering robotic arms on the space station is in clinical trials for using patients with a breast cancer. The image guided autonomous robot IGAR works inside an MRI machine to help accurately identify the size and location of a tumor. Using IGAR, surgeons also will be able to perform highly dexterous precise movements during biopsies and surgeries, improving indoor air quality. Solutions for growing crops in space now translates to solution for mold prevention in wine cellars, homes and medical facilities as well as industries around the world. NASA is studying crop growth aboard the space station to develop the capability of astronauts to grow their own food as a part of agency's journey to Mars. Scientists working on this investigation noticed that a buildup of naturally occurring plant hormone called ethylene was destroying plants within the confined plant growth chambers. Researchers developed and successfully tested an ethylene removal system in space called Advanced Astroculture (ADV ASC). It helped to keep the plants alive by removing viruses, bacteria and mold from the plant growth chambers. The University of Wisconsin Advanced Astroculture Program, they developed an ethylene removal system that was successfully tested on a number of missions on the International Space Station. 
So the ethylene removal system that was developed draws air through a reaction chamber. The air is passed across a catalyst bed, and that catalyst has the effect of removing anything organic from the air. That includes mycotoxins, bacteria, viruses, and even mold. Scientists adopted ADVASC system for use in air purification. Now this technology is being used to prolong the shelf life of fruits and vegetables in the grocery store and winemakers are using it in their storage cellars. If you like my content, help me by liking, commenting and sharing my content as well as by subscribing to my channel. It is free. Thank you all very much. See you soon.